This is so, what, uh, probably what Roundtree's and his buddies' uh, log houses would have looked like that they built here in the Springfield area, uh, three of them in, in a week. So you know they're not very fancy. You're going to throw three of those things up, basically one every two days. Uh, but this was the most basic kind. We call this a single pin log house for obvious reasons. It's just one room. It's basically a log room with a roof on it and a door. Maybe that you can see this one has two doors, maybe three or four doors. I'm not sure how many. We can't see the other sides, so we don't know. But pretty basic thing. You can see the, uh, the logs are, uh, the log houses are built with logs laid horizontally, not like the French style that we talked about earlier with the vertical log construction where you actually stick the logs or poles down into the ground. These are horizontal logs. And you just notch them on the corners. We'll look at, at the way that the, the corners of, the, of these buildings are notched are fit together. They're not nailed together. This required a lot of skill uh, to build it. You could build one in a, in a pretty good hurry, but you had to be pretty good with an ax too to build one of these log houses because you had to notch them and fit them together at the edges so it wouldn't just fall apart. Most of, the, of these uh, single pin log houses were 20 feet square or less. A lot of them were 15, 16 feet square. That's not very big. That's one little room. And these houses were not usually meant to be long-term residences. When you built a, a single pin cabin like that, you were probably thinking, we'll live in this a couple years. Things, times get better. We'll build a bigger one or we'll build another pin like this and hook it to the old pin and we'll see what we come up with when we do that here in a minute. But pretty simple, pretty basic, uh, not very big. You can see uh, usually they, they'll have a chimney on one end. In the early days, the chimneys were, uh, they were not made of brick. Uh, they were often not made of Stone, they were sometimes made of mud and sticks and uh, sometimes just stacked rocks with no mortar or anything. Right, you can see here, this one has uh, what's left of, a, of an old foundation. Uh, they're just, in this case, it's just rocks that they've got under there. And most of, most of the time, uh, the log house would be set on at least some kind of foundation, even if it was a rock on each of the four corners, something like that. I was just uh, over the weekend reading an account of a guy who was in uh, southeast Missouri around 1820, and he talked about visiting a log cabin uh, that had a dirt floor. He said it was, it was basically about a 16 feet square log cabin, and they had no floor in it. It was just just dirt. And that was the most basic thing. And in that case, they just had the logs sitting on the ground. Uh, but usually, especially in later years, uh, they would at least have some sort of foundation for them to sit on. But again, most people didn't spend just a whole lot of years in a cabin like that, uh, unless they were just really poor or just really back in the woods somewhere. The idea was to eventually build another pen to add on to it or build another house completely, ultimately maybe build a frame house, which was considered much nicer than a log house. And I think I brought, yeah, I brought a couple of things. Uh, now, of course, we're talking about the early 1800s here, but... This kind of construction continued into the 20th century. And I came across this story from uh, North Central Arkansas. This is a woman who was writing in the 1970s uh, and remembering her childhood in the early 1900s. And 
she mentioned that her family, uh, they lived south of Mammoth Spring, Arkansas, which is just right under the state line down there, right below Thayer, Missouri. They, uh, their house burnt in 1913, and her dad and her brothers rebuilt a, a log house, basically one just pretty much like that, a 16 by 16 foot log house just to give them a place to, to live in. And eventually they kept the log house and built and kept building on to it. And whenever they had the opportunity and the money, they would build another room onto this log house until eventually they had like a four room house. But it all started with this one little log house that they built in 1913. And that's really late for log house building, uh, but it was, it was a, a craft, uh, a style of architecture that was still in the Ozarks you know, just a hundred years ago. <coughs> so, so that was a, a pretty, pretty neat thing. They also, uh, they did, uh, when they built their house in 1913, they did buy uh, milled lumber for the floor and the ceiling and stuff like that. So it wasn't quite as, uh, as pioneer and archaic as some of the early uh, log houses were because they did have access to sawmills and stuff like that, but it was much cheaper for them to, when they needed a house immediately to build a, to build a log house. This is the uh, double pin house and pretty easy concept. Two single pins side by side with a, with a doorway or a, an open hallway in, in, inside the house to go from one to another. Sometimes these double pin houses result from just building a second pin onto an original single pin log cabin. Or sometimes a house is built from the beginning as a double pin house. And a double... You're saying that's it? not one big house, it's two smaller. Well, it's, it's, it's one house, but it's, it's basically constructed as two of those single pins that we just looked at. They're just side by side. Yeah. And, and there, would be, there would be a wall in here, yeah, with probably a doorway connecting the two rooms. Yeah. Because, as I said, a lot of times the double pin houses are just a result of, okay, we built our single pin house three years later. We got three more kids, and here, here we are. We need a, a second pin, so you just build on to the first one. And you've got uh, two fireplaces, two chimneys on this one, one at either end. Now, this style of house continued to be popular in the rural Ozarks well into the 20th century, not necessarily as a log house, but even when people started to build frame houses, they often kept these old vernacular styles. And you see lots and lots of old houses. They're usually abandoned nowadays, but I, I know some people who still live in these old houses that are double pin houses, but they're frame houses. They were just built on that old double pin log cabin uh, blueprint. And they, so if you've seen these old houses with two front doors, and you wonder why in the world would somebody build a house with two front doors? They used to be very common, and it wasn't, uh, as if the two front doors had a special function in Ozark society. That's just, they were just copying earlier styles of, of architecture. Now, they could, they could have a function if you had, uh, you know, if you had that interior doorway and you kept it shut and you kept the two rooms separate, you know, you could go in and out either room that way. Uh, so it could, you know, it could be handy that way. But for the most part, it's just two front doors. I know a guy uh, down in Arkansas who still lives in one of these. He's in his 80s now, uh, and it's, I've visited him many times, and he's, I've never seen him use the right door. He always uses the left door because I think the, the right side of the house is where his bedroom is, and the left side is, is sort of the living room is where the, the wood stove is. So, you know, the other, the other door may just be permanently welded shut or something. I'm not sure. I've never seen it open. But his house looks very much like that. So 
that's the double penthouse. A modified version of the double penthouse that you used to see every once in a while. This was much more, uh, or much less common, was the so-called saddlebag house. And the only difference between this and the double pen is the placement of the chimney. In this case, uh, the saddlebag house has one chimney in the middle, fireplace for both rooms, but it's, it's in the middle. And so you get that kind of saddlebag quality to it. And that's where the, the name comes from, the saddlebag house. And I think this is an old picture, if I remember right. I've had this one so many years, I don't remember exactly. I think that's, this is an old picture from a house in Taney County, which is down in the Branson area. And you can see this one has a pretty good foundation under it. And I don't know if that's a log house or a frame house. Again, it could be either one. It looks like it has two, two storage as well. Yeah, that's, and then that one's got, this would be uh, what, what's often referred to as a story and a half. And a lot of those, a lot of the old uh, log houses had, uh, had the first floor and then they had kind of a modified attic sort of thing. Uh, if you remember uh, watching Little House on the Prairie, you know, that uh, again wasn't an Ozark house, but they had that where the kids slept in the loft, basically, and you had kind of a half of a second floor there, and that's probably similar to that. And, and that one may just be a full second floor, too. But now a lot of these times, you can see these buildings or these houses in the Ozarks, and they look like they're frame houses, uh, but it's because they've just put siding on log houses. So it's hard to tell with some of them until you get underneath and kind of poke around or get under, uh, underneath the house and you know, look at the original timbers and all that sort of stuff to tell exactly what they are. Again, two, two doors on that one close together. I guess if you wanted to turn your house into apartments, that'd be handy. 